Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. As many of us approach midlife, sometimes we find ourselves becoming single, perhaps even alone, widowed, widowered, whatever the case may be, even divorced, and perhaps seeking new love. But you know, by the time we approach midlife, it seems that our priorities change. After all, when we're younger, we seem to look after attraction and how somebody can fulfill our needs. But as we get older and wiser, we tend to be probably more spiritually fulfilled and realize that maybe it's something else that we long for. More of sharing, who knows what it may be. But today we're going to be exploring that. On our program today, we're going to be joined with a nationally recognized authority on women and family issues of media. She was the first editor of Ms. Magazine, and she also was the winner of the Peabody Award for the award-winning documentary, She's Nobody's Baby, American Women in the 20th Century. Today we'll be talking with her about her book, How We Love Now, Sex and the New Intimacy in Second Adulthood. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest, Ms. Suzanne Braun Levine. Suzanne, thank you for joining us here on the program today. Oh, I'm delighted. I look forward to talking to you. Well, I'm glad we're talking now, so there's the forward part. (laughs) (laughs) Now, How We Love Now, tell us about this book and how you came to write it. This is the third book that I have written uh, basically about women in midlife. Um, although men obviously play a role. Uh, The first book was called Inventing the Rest of Our Lives, and that was mainly uh, the account of the discovery that I was making as a woman and a journalist of the fact that there was a lot of uh, change and self-discovery and uh, excitement going on in women's lives after menopause, after the stage at which we're supposed to uh, disappear, um, and that a lot of women were confused because they felt great. Uh, They were exploring new frontiers. Um, They they enjoyed their lives, and there seemed to be something wrong with them. Mm -hmm in their own minds. And one of the things that I learned uh, at Ms. and in the women's movement is that if one woman or a few women are experiencing something, you can be pretty sure that a lot more are. But they all think that they're either the only one or they're crazy. And so I set out to document what I was pretty sure was a widespread sense that this was an exciting new stage of life. Mm -hmm. The second book dealt with some conclusions from that, and this one focuses specifically on intimacy and love. And as you said at the beginning, um, I keep finding that it is different in many important ways uh, from earlier times and definitions that we gave to love. Now, you also say in your book, How We Love, that, you know, the women are living, you know, different, totally, uh, you know, newer lives when it comes to love, sex, and intimacy. So tell us what's going on with them. Well, as you also said, I think one of the wonderful things about this stage of life is that we become much more in touch with who we are. And I know that sounds corny. But um, women have, in my generation, I don't think my daughter is growing up so much with this kind of uh, expectation, but my generation grew up uh, with a series of scripts that we were supposed to follow. Uh, Daughter, student, wife, mother, employee, and there were definite ideals established for all of those uh, roles. And we tried very hard uh, to fulfill them. You get to this stage, uh, this new stage, uh, where the uh, slate is clean in a way. And very often the signal of this new stage is when a woman hears herself say, you know, I don't care what people think anymore. Right. Right. And the other half of that is I'm beginning to care more what I think. 
So for one one important factor is that women are looking for love uh, from from their understanding of who they are, not from the expectation of what a partner should be like or what love should be like or what they should be looking for. Um, earlier in my day, um, the expectation was that uh, if you were looking for a man, he had to be older, taller, richer, more successful, and that he would bring uh, a life into your life. Right. A- and um, as I'm sure you have observed, women are often now older, taller, <laughs> and more successful. And uh, the whole uh, the whole playing field has enlarged in terms of um, looking for and finding. Uh, people that you will love. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know, and especially with women more and more, you know, being professionals and being able to take care of themselves, they're not so, I guess, eager to find somebody who will take care of them. Mm-hmm. Right. And in fact, there are women, uh, this, this is a little snide, but there are women who've told me that uh, especially... Uh, in the at the uh, older e- edges of this age group, that they often encounter men who think that they're God's gift to the you know seventy five year old widow. Oh boy! And uh, she <laughs> she says to herself, "I'm not going to be his nurse with a purse." <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I I think women feel much more comfortable operating on their own if they want to or have to and much more eager for um, a real partnership um, and companionship and less drama. I think everybody that I talked to who had found a, a new kind of love said one of the things that made it so feel so good was that there was less drama and I certainly know what they mean. You probably do, too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know there was one time I was out with a friend of mine, and she had stopped. We actually stopped and stayed overnight at a girlfriend of hers. And, uh, and this was, uh, my friend was a lady who was about 49 years old, and her friend was probably right around her mid-50s. And uh, we got into talking. Uh, she had a boyfriend at the time, and apparently he had called during the time that I was there at the house, and and I could sense a little bit of desperation that he was the one who was feeling lonely, and she had made the comment something of, no, you don't need to come over and rescue me tonight, you know, sort of like she was <laughs> becoming annoyed with him. And I actually found that interesting because that's, you know, how I felt, you know, when it would come to dating is, you know, I'll be, you know, I'm kind of doing my own thing right now, and you should do your own thing, but, uh, you know, the bottom line is we enjoy doing things together, but don't feel that you need to, contact me any more than I'm co- contacting you every five minutes when we're away, feeling like we need to be together. <laughs> I think that's absolutely right. The, the whole idea that some, that you need another person in order to breathe. Right. Uh, um, is, Especially as you get older, I think sometimes people feel that way, you know, that, you know, they need me to be there because they're older and alone, you know, and I don't think mm-hmm. that's entirely true. I'm sure you don't either. I think it's the opposite. I think that uh, if you get older and are still engaged with the world and and have a community and things you like to do, um, you're more and more inclined to want to operate on your own schedule, on your own terms, and then come back to the relationship and uh, share uh, your experience. But this whole joined at the hip business, I think, is mm-hmm. uh, is over. <laughs> mm-hmm. I agree. Now, um, you know, what what is this? Uh, do you think it's different now than it had been, say, thirty years ago? 
Oh, no question. Okay. Absolutely no question. And what kind of differences do you see? I know you touched on uh, uh, one or two of them here, but what do you think they are? Right. Well, I think the fact that in the last 30 years, uh, women of my generation have uh, become transformed into uh, the people we've just been talking about, independent, self-confident uh, people who are able to take care of themselves. Right. Um, and the, Which is not to say, and I, I, I really do want us to think about this, this is not to say that this has happened to all women. And the women who um, find themselves alone and uh, vulnerable and confused um, are in a really tough spot. And I would say to anybody who knows a woman like that, um, to really not try to keep her company, but try to get her out there into Mm. the world or even onto the Internet. I think that's made a gigantic difference Mm -hmm. in terms of our connectedness. But... um, There's one interesting factor that I have heard over and over again that I think maybe explains how different our wish list is nowadays. Um, Several women said to me, you know, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I met lots of guys who thought I was great, who wanted to... uh, uh, who wanted to uh, make me feel great, um who were fun to be with and all of that. And I would hear myself say, you know, he's too nice. Uh Uh, By which I think we meant he didn't, um, he didn't play the game. He Uh, wasn't the hunter. (laughs) Exactly. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the hunter. And nowadays, uh, women talk about uh, themselves and their friends in second marriages in particular, um, that nice is absolutely at the top of the list. And all this game playing and hunting and chasing and do you like me and do you still mm-hmm. like me um, is is um, not of interest and certainly not fun. Now, it's kind of interesting when you think about it, and this is from a male perspective when it comes to sex, um, and that is when uh, we're earlier in our lives, late teens and early 20s, when the, the pursuit of that is occurring, is that I remember, you know, sometimes you'd hear young women say, you know, all guys ever think about is sex, you know, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And you're like, well, yeah, that's how we are. I mean, at that age, what do you expect? But then, you know, as you approach into your mid to late 30s and into your 40s, those tables really turn quite a bit. (laughs) You know, tell Uh, us about what's going on there. Well, you probably know better than I do. (laughs) (laughs) No, it was funny because there was a time that I was actually talking. It was with an insurance agent, and somehow, you know, we got off of talking about the quotes and all that other stuff, and uh, he was talking about this uh, new woman that he was seeing, and uh, she was like 42 or 43 years old. And so, you know, we're talking about how dynamic the relationship, how different it was from when we were younger. Uh, she uh, was a professional, kind of doing her own thing, as we've been talking about earlier in, this, in the program, and, uh, you know, didn't really have the need for him to be around, which he felt, well, oh, that's pretty nice. You know, I can do my own thing, and the confidence of, She'll be there, I'll be there. Would we want to be there for each other is, you know, uh, is how, uh, how it was working out. And, and and then he made a comment that I found interesting because it was, to me at least, in my experience, pretty true. And that is, he says, you know, when it comes to sex, they don't play around. I mean, it's really, you know, straightforward and let's go, baby, kind of a thing. And which is very different from when they're in their late teens and early 20s. So he wasn't intimidated. He was uh, observing a, a positive development. Is that exactly. The way you heard it? Exactly. <laughs> he was just saying, you know, they don't, I... you know, make no bones about having sex. You know, I mean, there's no playing around with it, like come and get me sort of a thing. But at the same time, it isn't easy either. It's like, yeah, let's go. 
kind of a uh-huh. thing, you know, is, is I guess what I mean. So you, you could say in the one context it's easy, but it isn't easy as in the sort of, you know, here I am easy kind of a thing, if that makes any sense. Right. But you can see from even just this conversation how confusing um, it has been for women. Easy. I mean, right. you use the word easy, and right there uh, you have a confusing term. You know, is is sex easy because both people are into it and uh, they're just, you know, they're going on their instinct and their hormones? Or is the woman easy and therefore bad? And I think one of the reasons that as we age, uh, we become more um, open and um, uh, honest about our sexuality is that we had this totally oppressive image of uh, any woman who um, who was interested in sex the way the boys were um, uh, was bad. I mean, uh, you know, or was there was something wrong with her or she was doing something that she couldn't tell people about. And very much in in that tradition was the notion that uh, love and sex and procreation all had to be in the same package. And I think what has happened uh, as women have become more confident and as we have all become more comfortable um, talking about sex, um, that those three things have gotten... uh, sorted out separately Uh so that women uh, are are comfortable. They're not rejected by society if they have a child on their own. Um, Women can love people um, uh, without having a sexual relationship. Um, they They can enjoy the sex and realize that the rest of the relationship is never going to go anywhere. And as we get older, the, um, the, the reproductive part um, becomes irrelevant. And you've got the love and the sex part to explore. So um, I, I, I think that this is all new territory. And I keep coming back to that because I do feel that this stage that I call second adulthood is a totally new a chunk of life, and um, we all know that uh, somebody who's 50 can statistically expect to live uh, another 25 years about, and I I think if, if we think about it, we realize that we have arrived at age 50 having lived an adulthood of 25 years. So there's really this chunk of time, um, when I call it a second adulthood, I really mean it's a, it's a second, it's a chance to live a lot of the aspects of your life over again. And what's, what was interesting to me is to have a, a gerontologist explain to me that this 25 years, we tend to think of it coming at the end. You know, that we are old longer. But the truth is, it's coming in the middle. It's Mm -hmm. become, it's coming between adulthood and old age. It's a totally new life experience. And that's what makes it confusing and exciting and um, uh, unexplored. Fascinating. It's it's just it's interesting how so much changes by the time you know we approach midlife, and and you don't think about it, I guess, for a lot of us until you're there. But it's also very exciting at the same time. Mhm. Have you found that? I mean, you you talk about this life absolutely as yeah, much as absolutely. I do. It's like you said uh, in the beginning. You know, we tend to sort of throw the reckless abandon. You know. Uh, to the side or, you know, and we just pursue what we want. We don't really 
think too much about how we're pleasing other people or how we're making other people feel better about us, you know, looking for approval. We just kind of say, you know, we start grabbing our lives and then moving forward. Well, I'm happy to hear a man put it that way because that <laughs> certainly is the way most women feel. Right. Hmm. Now, how did you uh, come to to get the research in your book? What you know? What areas did you explore to put your book together? Well, uh, for my past books, I generally tried to reach out to a network of women who knew women who knew women, um, and got tried to uh, fill in the gaps. You know, I would put out the word that I needed to talk to somebody who was divorced or somebody who um, uh, was looking for love or whatever. But in the process of writing these three books, the Internet has uh, emerged as the most interesting source of uh, interviews and um, stories and truth-telling. Uh, I did interview a lot of women in the old way, and I did interview a lot of women that I met online. But I also was able to put out a questionnaire on several of the midlife websites and got fascinating response. Uh, people, the Internet has enabled people or encouraged people to uh, tell everything. Um, it's, you know, in its way, it's safe. It's anonymous. Uh, and you can hear yourself uh, talk about yourself in ways that you might not even feel comfortable talking to a friend. Mm, fascinating stuff. Now, uh, tell us, is that is there a website people can find out more about your work? Oh, yes, and I hope they do check it out because I'm really trying to post interesting things that are relevant on it. It's simple, SuzanneBraunLevine.com. SuzanneBronLevine.com, all one word. Mm -hmm. Very good. The book is How We Love Now, Sex and the New Intimacy in Second Adulthood. And our guest, Suzanne Levine. Thank you for joining us here on the Beyond 50 radio program. It was my pleasure. You bet. I want to thank you, the listeners out there, for tuning in. This is Beyond 50. Be sure to visit us on our website at beyond50radio.com. That is the number 50. Sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter. We will have an archive of this segment here on our blog page. Be sure to go there as well. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is Beyond 50, and remember, live your day past.